Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm super happy to be kicking off the presentations for the COVID-19 challenge. Um, we heard so many great pitches and ideas from the first round this morning, and we are really excited to hear from our finalists uh, this afternoon. Uh, this year, our partner was the UCLA COVID-19 Behind Bars Data Project, and quite a few of them um, are our judges today. So I'd like to hand it off to Liz from our judging panel, who will give um, a bit of an introduction to the team, and then we can uh, dive right into the rest of the presentations. Sure. Thanks, Casey. Hi, everyone. My name is Liz DeWolf. Um, so the UCLA COVID-19 Behind Bars uh, Data Project essentially tracks um, data on the spread of covid across um, American carceral facilities with the intention of um, you know, making that data as accessible as possible and holding carceral systems accountable. Um, one of our major issues is that data availability and quality vary really dramatically um, by jurisdiction. And so our challenge for this hackathon um, was to come up with a scoring methodology that would allow us to compare um, pandemic response uh, by state. Um, we had six teams, I believe, um, and all of them put in so much work and came up with such great proposals. So thank you to everybody who participated. And uh, also thank you to Michael and Pornima who are here on my team as well. Um, our next presentation is by Team COVID Justice. Uh, thank you fellow teams, organizers, sponsors, judges, and new friends. It is an honor to participate in such a noble cause. Uh, next slide, please. Isolation is the main recommendation by the WHO and CDC to prevent the spread of COVID-19. In theory, an individual enters the correctional system to be isolated from society since it has been deemed of danger to the society. However, data shows that these isolated populations are the ones with the highest risk for contracting this new virus. To contribute to the improvement and humane treatment of this underserved population, we propose a tool for grading, scoring, and ranking of the institutions and states that provide care to the incarcerated inmates. The main goal of this tool and the investment of resources required to implement it is to guide the behavior of the facilities and state agencies via gamification to improve their management of this pandemic. The focus with the greatest benefits should be on preventing the spread of the virus that is brought in by the people who are in contact with the outside world. Because once it enters the incarcerated population, the infectivity rate is greater in the settings due to the nature of the conditions such as overcrowding. Next slide, please. The chosen indicators for grading were selected based on our investigation of the main factors contributing to the big picture problem, which is, inmates and isolated population contracting COVID-19. We based our scoring system on the main categories of data transparency and quality, infection incidents, response strategies to limit infections. As Nina from the internet so passionately and inspirationally reminded us, data gathering and analysis is the main factor that will lead to evidence-based solutions and therefore, we strongly recommend a high score weight on this grading system aided by legislative help by mandating compliance with reporting of metrics. Second, infection incidence reduction should be the main goal to focus on, and therefore, we allotted a high score weight to innate positive cases. Since employees are exposed to the risk of the outside jail environment, we don't want to penalize the correctional facilities for this inherent risk but we do want to focus their efforts on preventing the spread to inmates. Third, we focus less on the specific practices of response strategies to avoid limiting the creativity and initiatives of each institution on adapting the prevention strategies that are likely to be more effective for their particular setting. Concurrently, we propose frequent revision and readaptation of this tool to include the most effective infection control strategies as further evidence emerges by the efforts of the scientific community. Next slide, please. As you can see on this computed scores, there's a significant room for improvement in the state scores. This can also be applied to individual facilities. And in summary, our policy recommendations are to improve state mandated data reporting, to incorporate a pandemic management scoring system, and to standardize the adherence to guidelines on infection spread that have been historically effective 
for other similar infectious diseases and are gradually emerging as evidence accumulates for this pandemic. Thank you. Uh, just as, uh, and thank you for your presentation again. Also, apologies, I have a plane flying over me, so I'm just going to lower the window. Um, so specifically in your scoring metric, do you feel like you prioritized a pandemic response score or a data transparency score in any format or the other, and why so or why not? And how would you at least uh, rationalize that in the logic of a correctional data score for a system that has very poor data as transparency? Yes, uh, we based our scoring system on the data that was available, um, because if we make it more difficult, we won't have um, the available data to score. So what was available and what we chose as the most important issue was to focus to, um, as to say, to keep the eye on the ball, which is decreasing uh, positive COVID-19 cases in inmates who technically should not be getting any cases since they are an isolated population. That is the behavioral change that we want to guide um, instead of going into minutia and um, making um, and pushing these uh, facilities to focus on collecting data on smaller things. We want them to focus on the big issue and implement, give them that freedom without limiting them on recording details of um, the things that they do. Um, this is our uh, contribution to the equality because what works for one population in one state will not work for another. What works in one jail system will not work in another. So we want to provide that freedom um, based on psychology practices. When you tell the person, this is your goal, uh, the entire team will try to figure out what is best to do. But the, as our speaker presented in earlier days, if you try to, um, um, do the uh, points to measure. Um, there was an example that just a small bar of soap was given and that was labeled as um, a metric for providing hygiene equipment. So we want to avoid that, but we also want to focus a little bit um, of that um, to push them to do um, things that have worked for populations in general, um, statewide. That way they can be um, revised frequently uh, based on evidence that emerges from the scientific communities and to push that behavioral change. But the main things that we focus is diminution of cases um, in inmates and also reporting of data because data guides science. Yeah, so our winners for the COVID challenge was Team COVID Justice. Uh, congratulations. And you guys got a very specific comment. You got props for attempting to deal with a very complicated issue, namely how to compare death and infection rates given the available data. And the judges were very impressed by that. Woohoo! Congrats! Happy hackathon!